Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video we're going to talk about insurance companies. In this file I listed all the publicly traded insurance companies. If you are a member of my Patreon channel, you can get this Excel file along with my other Excel files. So there's a few different industries, there's insurance brokers, and there's diversified insurance companies. The largest insurance company in the world is Berkshire Hathaway. Then there's life insurance companies, property and casualty insurance, reinsurance, specialty insurance. So there's 114 publicly traded insurance companies in the U.S. And the reason Assured Guarantee is highlighted is because I worked there for seven years. Most people try to avoid valuing insurance companies because they're so complex. But there are some straightforward techniques and metrics to understand them. The way insurance companies make money is they pull together premiums and these premiums offset future losses and also operating expenses to run a business like payroll. Pretty much the main reason insurance companies are operating today is because of the risk of loss. For instance, if there's a family of four and there's one person who's making all the money, if that person died or became disabled, the family may really suffer. So they may take out life insurance on that person in case that happens. There's other insurance like car insurance which is mandatory, but most insurance is not mandatory. The big challenge for an insurance company is estimating what future claims will be and setting appropriate premiums. And of course you want to leave money left over for investors. Most people don't realize this, but insurance companies usually manage a really large investment portfolio. The money in these portfolios comes from premiums. And this is what caused the Great Recession in 2008, insurance companies investing those premiums in subprime bonds. Because insurance companies can't really invest in things that are below investment grade. And some of these subprime bonds were rated double and triple A, which indicates a very limited risk of loss on those bonds. But it turns out those bonds were mostly junk. And when you look into an insurance company, float is a really important thing to understand. That's why Warren Buffett talks about it a lot. He wrote this in one of his annual letters. Float is money we hold but do not own. Float arises because premiums are received before losses are paid, an interval that sometimes extends over many years. During that time, the insurer invests the money. The premiums that an insurer takes in may not cover the losses it eventually must pay. An insurance business has value if its cost of float over time covers expenses, else it's a lemon. That's also how a lot of banks make money is on float. Sometimes when you transfer money from one person to another, it could take one, two, or three business days. It shouldn't really take more than a second or two. That's how long the transfer takes. The reason it takes a few business days is because the bank holds the money and invests it. You may be thinking, how much money can my bank really make on the $50 I transferred in one day? Sure, they may only make a penny or two on interest. But when you multiply that by millions and millions of transactions, that really adds up. Buffett also mentions that valuing an insurance company is difficult. You have to really trust the firm's actuaries on making reasonable assumptions. And those assumptions balance the premiums they take in to pay those future claims. Price to book is the primary valuation measure for insurance companies. Book value is shareholders equity. That's the company's value should it cease to exist and be completely liquidated. Price to tangible book value strips out goodwill and other intangible assets. And this gives you a more accurate gauge on the net assets left over should the company close shop. A quick rule of thumb for insurance companies is that they're worth buying at a price to book at one or lower. And they're considered pricey at a price to book at two or higher. So for an insurance company and banks, book value is a solid measure of the company's balance sheet. And some people also look at ROE when looking at insurance companies or banks. An ROE around 10% does suggest the firm is covering its cost of capital and generating an ample return for shareholders. And generally the higher the better when you look at ROE. Price to book, the lower the better. Another thing to consider is the premium growth potential. Also the potential to introduce new products. The discounted cash flow model could also be used for insurance companies. But this could be a little tricky because cash flow is a difficult gauge to measure for insurance companies. That's mainly due to the high influence of their investment portfolio. 
Let me just give you a simple example of how I may look at an insurance company. So MetLife is the largest life insurer, 57 billion market cap. Aflac is second at 45 billion. The British company Prudential PLC is third at 37 billion. These are all the market caps for the US publicly traded stocks. MetLife's price to book is 2.3, Aflac is 1.9, and Prudential is 2.3. So Aflac has the best price to book, but all their price to books are a little on the higher side. You wanna see closer to one. When you look at the ROE, MetLife is seven, Aflac is 20, and Prudential is 12. So just based on the above, Aflac is the most attractive, has the highest ROE and lowest price to book. Although its price to book is still well above one, which does imply it still may be overvalued. So the question is, does a high ROE compensate for a weak price to book? So this may be a situation you wanna dig a little deeper into each insurer's financial statements. To summarize, as you can tell, valuation is more of an art than a science. You can't just apply a formula and that formula will say buy or sell. It's much more nuanced than that. But as you know, it's pretty easy to calculate historical numbers, but valuation is making a reasonable estimate on the future. So when you look at insurance companies, a high ROE is important and also a low price to book and help put the odds in your favor. But there's a lot more to valuation than ROE and price to book. If you looked at Berkshire Hathaway, which is a diversified insurance company, they do so many things beyond insurance, but we know they own a big chunk of Apple, Coca-Cola, and many other companies which aren't insurance. So it could be difficult to compare some of these ratios. And this Excel file has a ton of columns. It goes all the way down to column GD, working capital, which is current assets minus current liabilities. But if you're looking for the best value, Manual Life has a price to book of 0.8. But generally there's a reason you're getting such a discount with this stock and you'd be paying such a premium with this stock. Assured Guarantee, which I worked at for seven years, does bond insurance. They wrap muni bonds or structured finance bonds. I worked on a lot of different structures there, REITs, CDOs, mortgage-backed securities, RMBS. And when the Great Recession hit, they were the only bond insurer that stayed strong, mainly because they didn't have much exposure in subprime bonds. Assured had a double A rating. So the AAA bond insurers like MBIA, AMBAC, and Fidgic, they were able to take in the high margin subprime business. So I hope you learned something new in this video. Leave a like, comment, subscribe. Talk to you soon.